I must admit that I am a fan, although I know it's incorrect, of the archaic term Mahometan, wrong as though they show respect to the Prophet, he was just a man, so Muslim, submitter, from Islam, submission, is the more correct. So to Baphomet first came from the sort of trend you get when scribes use distant, different names, in this case, again, from Mahomet, first appearing when some made the claim that the Cathars of Carcassonne fame, who the Catholic Church saw as a threat, worshipped him in sickening rites, when in fact a vegetarian feast honouring an unfleshly light led by men and women priests without any churchly wealth in sight was more their line, and this just might have made the church look to the east. In search of details for their lies, since the eastern heathen hordes had been already demonised, the Daily Mail still used such words, then, once Cathars were despised, it could be more easily rationalised to kill them for our loving Lord. If something works, do it again. So when the church saw Templar knights collecting wealth and power, our friend Baphomet had his name in lights once more, and once more used to lend the justified crusading ends that make the means of murder right. This Baphomet was no goat. Instead, the Templar knights worshipped a cat, or else a reliquary head, kept by a cross on which they spat, the head they kissed, or so it was said, in reports which led to trials which led to the fiery jacket, the hemp cravat. Having been purged with stake and noose, the temple knights, of course, dissolved, or went underground and on the loose. Certainly, legends they did so evolved. One said that in Scotland they fought for the Bruce. The Pope loved the English. They'd need no excuse for getting the knights of the temple involved. Whether they died or went underground, the Templar Knights, and with it that name, continued to circulate, gaining renown in histories, making spurious claims that can read like a lunatic's rantings writ down, or the plot of a plagiarised book by Dan Brown. Then once more Baphomet changed. Alphonse Louis Consant, Eliphas Levi Zahed, was a magician and author who wrote a series of books in their time widely read, which, influenced by a classical quote, said goodbye to the Templar's head and drew from an Egyptian deity instead, who he said took the form of a goat. <coughs> a goat-headed human, wings on its back, with a five-pointed star incised on its brow. While Levy repeated the old myths as facts, his new myths meant Baphomet looked like this now, partly now female and deniably stacked, but with phallic staff and snake-charming act and words on their arms written down. Solvi and Coagula split up and join. Baphomet to Levy was a mystical blender, hence the breasts on their chest and the snake from their groin, to signify union of binary gender, with everything both sides of just the one coin, with their own special forces, but all things conjoined. That message was Levi's agenda. This creature, he said, was seen as the devil, of the kind that led covens in orgiast rites. That was true, Levi wrote, but this goat wasn't evil, and when it led wild witches on their Sabbath nights, they were practising ways from the pagan primeval, seen as satanic sorceries by the medievals, and described now as diabolic delights. Something from Levi's imagination, in merging together the profane and the holy, struck a chord with and gave clear inspiration to a later occultist named Alistair Crowley, perhaps due to Alistair's infatuation with coming together from mere masturbation or buggering neophytes slowly. Thus lewdly described by old Uncle Al, Baphomet spread through the cultural scene, and then Anton LaVey, Satan's best pal and consummate showman, came up with a scheme to found his own faith in which to corral weird loners and reindians and suicide gals and which took the goat's head as its meme. If that account of the church seems quite bitchy, it's also quite true, and they and I don't agree. But while my own ways are druidic and witchy, some Satanists are folk quite pleasing to me. 
if not Anton's lot, than at least one group which he gave inspiration to, though in some ways they ditched the thoughts that went with his vocabulary. They're the Satanic Temple, and you might say that you have not heard of them, but you have, and they're great. They're the ones that fought for the Baphomet statue to defend separation between church and state, the argument being you have to take that too if county courthouses or any of that crew think the two tablets something to celebrate. The Temple campaign to uphold and change laws on progressive concerns using tropes from Levy, like protecting our access to safe abortion, with Satan or Baphomet being their way to outrage their country's Christian portion, humanist aims with parodic distortion, in the style of Jack Check, I would say. Baphomet has travelled from Templar to Temple, picking up traits in his wake, from a scurrilous slur in a legal preamble before burning a saint at a stake, to the banner for radical rebels and vandals. Gods and monsters are like that. There's many examples. Baphomet was a spelling mistake. In the nameless grave, I came from God, the world to save. I brought them wisdom from above, Worship and liberty and love.